How's it going everyone? Virtually Chris here. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at OpenPilot's 0.6.1, which is the newest release that just came out. Uh, this release has some pretty cool additions, um, not any real major additions like last time when we had the brand new model and everything like that. Uh, but there will be some driving footage in the background of this release so you can see how OpenPilot performs. And I'll also leave this running after I'm done talking about the software. So first off, another new Toyota was added to the <laughs> super long list of Toyotas. Basically, any Toyota you get nowadays is supported by OpenPilot. And if it's not, it's a very easy thing to add. So the Toyota Sienna is now fully supported, which is super cool. If anyone has that out in the audience, go ahead and get OpenPilot today. It's super duper great. Another small change is that OpenPilot uh, has a lockout now. So if you're distracted three times in a row, like if you're not looking at the Eon for a super long time, uh, for three times in a drive, then it'll lock you out okay. until you turn your car on and off, which I think is a really good thing. Uh, we don't want anyone out there using open pilot really distracted and uh, not paying attention to the road at all. So that'll help keep the whole community safer. And, uh, you know, if, if someone ends up not paying attention mm -hmm. and uh, they, they didn't mean to, you know, they'll, they'll do better than they can pull over and reboot their car. That's no problem. The Panda Code is also further Misra compliant. Uh, and this is a the Motor Industry Software Reliability Association, basically a standard of uh, how software should run for cars and make sure that it is safe to use. Uh, so in this version of the code, uh, C2012 is compliant. I don't know too much about that. All I know is that's a very good thing for anyone out there uh, who has an open pilot system. It just adds that extra level of security and you know that all the code being run on the Panda, which is the device that can actually control the car, uh, is compliant with any other piece of software that's like in your car today. And finally, the super big announcement, which is pretty neat, is Comma Prime, which is a new service that Comma just launched. And it's basically an unlimited data service with some extra perks, with more perks coming in the future. Uh, but you can get a SIM card for $20 and then you pay $24 a month to get unlimited data for your Eon. All Eons have a SIM card slot, so you can really just buy this and uh, end up having unlimited data, which could be nice. Especially if you don't leave your car in the sun all the time, you could really just leave your Eon in the car. It'll upload the data instantly uh, through the unlimited data network. And you really wouldn't have to touch it too much uh, unless you weren't in the car for like a week or something like that. You want to unplug the Eon at that point. Uh, but I think this is a super cool addition that they added. It also has some other benefits other than just being an unlimited data plan, uh, which already seems pretty neat. I think a lot of people would want to do that if they're leaving this thing in their car permanently. And let's say their car isn't parked close enough to their Wi-Fi in their house or anything to upload their drives. Uh, this also means that you'll get some more cloud storage. So people without Comma Prime uh, will get three days of cloud storage, whereas people with Comma Prime will get up to 14 days of cloud storage. So if that accident happened a week ago and you want to get footage of it, you still can if you have Comma Prime. Uh, but either way, you can always download your drives uh, after they upload on my.comma.ai, and you can always do that no matter what. But I think the coolest thing is that there's remote SSH uh, if with Comma Prime, and that means that you can access your Eon anywhere in the world. Uh, you don't have to be on the same Wi-Fi network as it, whereas before you had to you know, have your computer connected to the same Wi-Fi as the Eon and type its IP address and all this stuff to get connected. Uh, this is really good for the developers out there, the people who want to add some additional features, uh, kind of over the internet features to their Eon. You know, some possibilities in the future could be like locking and unlocking the car doors remotely or something like that. Obviously, this is stuff that has to be explored more, so it's just cool that there's a service out there that allows you to start exploring these kind of features. And uh, we'll see, Kama might even start developing some features like this. Uh, but regardless, you'll be able to see where your car is, uh, where the GPS location says your car is at all times with Kama Prime, which is also, yet again, a really cool perk. So if someone happened to steal your car with the Eon installed, you could find out exactly where it is and uh, hunt them down that way. But it'll be really interesting to see how Comma Prime develops over the coming months, see if there's any really cool exclusive features that come out of this. Uh, but right now, you know, for any of the developers out there, it's really neat to be able to remote SSH into your Eon and edit any code or do any tweaks you need to do, basically from anywhere, which is really neat. So yeah, pretty small release of OpenPilot here, pretty incremental release. Uh, but 0.6 was a major release with that new driving model, and as you can see in this video, 
the RAV4 hybrid is driving really, really good. Uh, I hope you guys like my little disengaged and engaged graphic. I just want to be very clear when I'm in control and when Open Pilot's in control. Uh, so leave me any feedback on all of that in the comments below. It means a lot. And I will be getting the Civic back here in the next few weeks. So we're going to start pivoting and doing some uh, Open Pilot Civic videos for all those Honda people out there. It should be comparable performance. I, I really like using both of these cars a lot. I think the Honda has some advantages just in terms of how smooth the steering is, whereas the Toyota can obviously take much more steep turns because it has more torque and things like that. Uh, overall, there's trade-offs with really any car you get with Open Pilot, but they're all pretty good. So if your car is supported, you'll, you're guaranteed to have a pretty decent experience. And you know, if, if your car isn't tuned properly or something, you have access to the code. It's fully open source. So you can go in and change it and make your car run perfect, uh, which is something I have on my Honda Civic. I actually have a Honda pedal in there, which is something that direct controls the gas so I can have a little bit smoother acceleration from a stop and things like that. I'll make a video about that a little bit later, but it's nice that I'm able to go in the code, edit uh, how smoothly that thing starts from zero. And uh, yeah, it's just all fully customizable, but also the stock experience is pretty good. So. It's pretty easy if you just want to buy an Eon, a gray panda, and a giraffe today and plug it all in your car. The, the panda comes pre-installed in the giraffe right now, so it's super easy. You really just plug that one thing in, give it some power, and uh, plug in the Eon. Install Open Pilot, and you're all set to go. So yeah, definitely check it out if anyone hasn't checked it out already. This system is amazing. You can just look up videos for the car uh, make you have. And I'm sure there is probably an open pilot port of it. So with that being said, I'll see you all in the next video. Bye. <laughs>